I recently did a video on invasive species, a somewhat controversial topic. As with most invasive species, they do far more harm than good. Some people even view the animals themselves as inherently evil, which of course is not true as they simply try to survive. And we should always remember, most of the time, they have been introduced into their new environment by us, humans, for various reasons. Some more benign than others, but in the end, it has still over the last 500 years caused roughly one third of all animals that have gone extinct because of these invasive species. So it is obvious why most people villainize these invasive species, in spite of the fact that we should villainize ourselves, as we are the reason why they usually end up in the wrong place to begin with. One invasive species might even be next to you this very moment. One of this planet's most invasive species have been infested almost everywhere is the common house cat which have caused the death of millions if not billions of smaller animals over time, even driving some to extinction. Despite this, we of course all still love our little cats, which is quite fair as they are merely doing what comes natural to them. It is our job to make sure they don't cause harm to others, not theirs. But in some cases, rare as it may be, it has actually been shown that invasive species can be beneficial for local ecosystems. So I thought for today's video, We'll go through some of these unlikely heroes. For our first species, we have one of my personal favorites when I go snorkeling, the European green crab, which has been spread by cargo ships, ballast tanks to pretty much every ocean. And don't let its small size fool you. This small crab will eat anything. Plants, algae, small fish, mollusk, even other crab. Along the US coastline, this crab has been a major problem ever since their first arrival in the 1800s. Due to their aggressiveness, they often kill or displace native crab species, which under normal circumstances would be a very bad thing. But along the northeastern US coastline, around New England, the European green crab is feeding on the purple marsh crab, which lives in the salt marshes across the eastern United States, where it has become abundant due to overfishing of its natural predators. And since there are no predators, the species has exploded in numbers, and as they feed on the cord grass which makes up the salt marshes, they are effectively eating the marshes to extinction. And on top of that, their burrowing is creating soil erosion. This problem had seemed impossible to contain until our little hero, the European green crab, arrived and went to work eating and driving out the purple crabs. Instead of destroying the ecosystem in this instance, it did the opposite as the native species had gone out of control and was destroying the ecosystem. As the green crab increased in population and the purple crab dwindled, cord grass recovered, the soil erosion stopped and many other native species that depended on the salt marshes are thriving once again. Our next unlikely hero is the Japanese white eye, a small olive green bird with a distinctive white eye, whose natural range is across a large portion of Asia. As an omnivore, it will eat both fruits and insects. In 1929, the white eye was introduced in the Hawaiian Islands as a natural form of pest control, a job it did very well, unfortunately, as it outcompetes local insect eating birds. And the white eye came with an ace up its sleeve diseases. As the native birds were fairly isolated from the rest of the world, their immune systems were not prepared for the diseases that the white eye brought with it from Asia, such as avian malaria, which the white eye is resistant to, but the native birds are. At this point, many native Hawaiian species have gone extinct, among them several species, honey creepers, a group of birds that's endemic to Hawaii. And as such, many plants have lost its pollinators and seem to be destined to go the way of the dodo themselves. Except, as the white eye is an omnivore and has become the most common bird in the Hawaiian Islands, it has taken on the role as pollinator for many of these plants. And since they're not as specialized as the native birds, they can bring more diverse genetic material to individual plants, which can result in crossbreeding and therefore stronger plants with better immune systems being able to deal with the threats of a globalized world, which would prevent an even greater ecological catastrophe. And as such, a small bird was a major part of the problem seems to have become an important part of the solution. For further entry, we have the butterfly peacock bass, a large voracious fish that has caused havoc in many ecosystems it has been introduced to, such as the Parana River in Brazil, where it resulted in a 95% drop in the native fish population. So truly a proper problem wherever it goes, right? Most of the time. 
Florida of all places, they aren't considered invasive. They are purposely released into the Florida water systems. After a major study, it was decided to release the fish into the Florida waterways because of just that aggressive feeding on other fish, as Florida has many problems with invasive species. And the peacock bass may just be a solution to some of them, as they were released to deal with oscars, mitis cichlids, and spotted tilapias which they seem to be doing quite well. Effectively, Florida is fighting fire with fire. And not only have they proven effective in dealing with other invasive species, they are also known to be a great angling fish. And this has created a million dollar industry in Florida where anglers come to Florida to try and catch these bass. For our last invader, we're heading to the Indian Ocean to a small French island with a beautiful and quite unusual entry to the list, the Aldabra giant tortoise. The Aldabras were introduced to save the native ebony trees, which without tortoises and other major fruit-eating species were unable to spread their seeds. The tortoises are now filling that role and it shows the importance of a strong and diverse wildlife is to local ecosystems. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I earned your subscription today. Bye!